a lot of dentists say they're open-minded, but in my area of dentistry, my experience proves otherwise. It has been my experience that a lot of dentists are closed-minded and not open-minded. And in order to really receive new education, it's critical that you be open-minded and you be open to new ideas and new learning, even if it conflicts with preconceived ideas. I'm Dr. Ed Feinberg. I'm Executive Director of the Online World Academy of Restorative Dentistry. And this week's blog is Give Yourself an Education, Open Your Mind. I was at a study group meeting last week affiliated with a well-known institute and a case was shown and everyone agreed with the instructor that teeth with, clinic, with no clinical crowns should be restored with buildups or posts. That is everyone except me. I pointed out that posts and buildups are not retentive and posts can actually do harm to teeth by setting them up for fracture. When crowns and bridge work fails, you can bet your bottom dollar that the post is gonna come out with the restoration. So how retentive really are they? I informed them that I gave up doing buildups and posts years ago because they don't work, they cause harm, and they are actually a waste of time. I can feel the stares like daggers. They must be thinking, who do you think you are? And where do you come off to make such an outrageous statement? We make money by charging for posts and buildups. We need that reimbursement from the dental insurance companies. Everyone in the room is too shocked by my audacity to ask, well, how in the hell do you restore them? Orthodontic extrusion? No. Crown lengthening? Sometimes, but only a minimal amount. Certainly not the amount necessary to create a clinical crown. When practitioners are just about to accuse me of lying, I whip out my trusty box of dyes flush with the gingiva that I made crowns for. And here's a small smattering of the actual number of crowns that I have done um, that are flush with the gingiva. <clears throat> I've done thousands of these teeth with a very high percentage of success. They stare at the dyes in disbelief, unable to process what they are seeing. Then I really get their goat when I tell them that I don't treat these teeth any differently from any other teeth. I let the patients wear all the crowns on a trial basis with Vaseline ointment or trial cement, which is like a rubber material, and the crowns do not fall out. Once they are cemented, they never come out and they never require re-cementing. Any crown that comes out and requires re-cementing is suspect because if they can come out, they can leak and decay. Now, the group thinks I'm totally nuts because they can't comprehend how this is even possible. Magical incantations? No. Obscure technology? No. In fact, all of these teeth were saved with low tech. The reason they can't comprehend how teeth with no clinical crowns can be saved without posts, orthodontic extrusion, or extensive crown lengthening procedures is because they have been indoctrinated to think according to a certain paradigm. I do not share their paradigm as I was trained differently, and that is why I can do things that they can't. While the entire profession fo is focused on tooth structure above the gingiva to save teeth, I'm focused on tooth structure below the gingiva. I do not care about any tooth structure above the gingiva. It is totally meaningless to me. And here's one case that I did uh, in 1998. This is over 20 years in the mouth, and this crown has never been re-cemented um, in all that time. And I can tell you from all the teeth that I did that real retention comes from the full shoulder, a long apron or ferrule, and the precision fit of the restoration on the preparation. That is all you need for retention. And here's another anathema in the conventional paradigm that onward followers are taught. Margins of crowns are placed subgingively on uncut tooth structure fairly close to the bone. Oh, you can't do that. 
you are violating biologic myth. Well, if that was true, that I was violating biologic with, I wouldn't be able to show 70 years of documented cases where thousands of teeth were prepared in the exact same way. And I wouldn't be able to show cases in health with x-rays for decades. I'm following the same protocol that came from dentistry's roots that my father's teacher pioneered. Isn't it interesting? that most presenters in the dental profession almost never show follow-up x-rays of finished cases. The truth is that much less width is actually needed for the biologic attachment than what is touted by the conventional paradigm. Truthfully, crowns and bridges fabricated according to the onward protocol have an unmatchable track record of success and longevity. The restorations are not only incredibly retentive, they protect the root surface from recurrent decay. Their design mirrors that of the mason jar cover, which is the best known method of food preservation. You can see how they are almost look exactly the same here in this slide. When I present x-rays of cases on, on, in the Onward program, I always point out how the margins of the crowns are close to the periodontal bone and mirror the bone, as you could see here in these finished x-rays, right? They mirror the bone. These are 30-year x-rays, no changes in 30 years. That's a tremendous success. This is the best architecture that you can have for health and for distributing forces along the foundation. I rarely hear speakers talk about engineering principles when it comes to crown and bridge work. Only cosmetics. So how on earth do you do this is the question that invariably comes next. I guarantee that most colleagues will not like the answer. This result, I tell them, is only achievable with copper band impressions. The answers are quite re predictable. Oh, that's old fashioned, you dinosaur. That's too hard. That's too time consuming. We can't do that. We've gone digital and metal free. Well, of course, none of these excuses hold water. The sobering reality is that the only way to register a complete impression of the entire root surface is with copper bands, unless the gingiva is completely cut away to expose the entire tooth structure. And no one would do this to a patient. It's also a reality that getting impression material to the bottom of the sulcus with cord is almost impossible. All the impressions I see in presentations and in magazines, and I mean all of them, are grossly inadequate in my opinion. As you can see here, these came out of a magazine, and this is what they tout as being good impressions. To me, that's totally inadequate because there's not enough tooth structure registered below the gingiva as compared to copper bands. And you could see here, I'm all the way down. And there's quite a big difference between this and the crowns that are being made on dyes made from these impressions. As you can see, take a look at these dyes here. The truth is that copper band impression taking is a skill like any other. Copper bands can be used with any impression material. It's the principle of the copper band that is important, not the impression material. But as with any skill, there's a learning curve. The more a practitioner works at learning the skill, the easier it becomes and the better and faster he or she becomes. It takes me far less time to take a copper band impression than if I had to pack cord with elastic. If compound is the impression material, and I know a lot of people say, oh, that's not very accurate, or that's old-fashioned, um, I can take a faulty impression over in seconds, and I don't have to worry about bleeding or hemostasis. That's a tremendous advantage. It always amazes me that the same practitioners who have learned to manipulate complicated digital designs of restorations on the computer find taking a copper band impression too difficult. Maybe they don't want to get their hands dirty. Less practitioners today know how to carve teeth, fabricate temporary restorations, and do hands-on laboratory work. They think that hands-on is beneath them because everything can now be done on the computer. In reality, this is not true. The technology is not there yet.
It would be nice if CBCT stamp could register an accurate 360 degree impression of the prepared tooth, but to date this is not possible. Conventional intraoral screening is confined to tooth structure above the gingiva. Certainly being able to register a complete impression with a scan would revolutionize dentistry, and I would be all ears if such an advancement came down the pike. I want to do better. It is the principle of registering an impression of the entire root surface that is important, not the method by which it's accomplished. It's so sad that most dental practitioners do not have the ability to look at problems from different points of view. Why are they so stuck in the paradigms that they were indoctrinated with? Why do so many practitioners refuse to even consider that their paradigms might be wrong? Why do they cling to these paradigms even when confronted with overwhelming evidence that they are in fact wrong? And as Dr. Branamark said, clinical requirements based on clinical documentation established during half a century must be respected. And as a result, what I have to offer must be respected because I have 70 years of documented evidence. And I have tremendous respect for Dr. Branamark. I got to meet him and he was a true scientist and researcher. And that's what I really, really admire. The real failing of dental education is not that they teach dentist techniques that I don't agree with. They have to teach students something in a very short period of time so they will have minimal proficiency when they graduate. The real failing is that students believe that those techniques are the only way to do things and the best way to do things, and nothing could be further from the truth. I gave a presentation to uh, University of Texas Houston Dental School a few years ago, and the meeting planners were very forward thinking. The presentation was created to honor the memory of Dr. Jack Winston, a visionary in dentistry. What an honor it was to be asked to present to this seminar. I will never forget the experience and the wonderful hospitality I experienced there. The audience was mixed and consisted of both practicing dentists and dental students at the university. The meeting planners were quite open about their desire to expose students to different points of view so that they would be open to new learning in the future. I presented some of the material that I just described and naturally, that material conflicted with the teachings of the professors at that school. The de practicing dentists loved my presentation and they gave me rave reviews, but the dental students thought I was the worst thing since stale bread. They were extremely upset that the material presented violated the teachings of their professors whom they held in high esteem. Is it any wonder that students today are indoctrinated with tunnel vision? They want to practice by rote or by cookbook. But this mentality is reserved for factory workers, not doctors. Doctors must be able to observe carefully, consider new ideas and advancements in the profession, and think outside the box in order to best solve clinical problems. We're treating individuals, not averages. Open-mindedness is what truly separates those who ply a trade from those who practice a profession. And education really cannot occur without open-mindedness. On the first page of Dr. Winston's autobiography, he quotes from Gibbon. Every person has two educations, one which he receives from others and one more important, which he gives himself. So attention dentists, become the best practitioner of full coverage restorative dentistry that you can be. Don't settle. Join the Onward program and learn how to do crown and bridge work that you can really hang your hat on with excellence and confidence. Learn how to save hopeless teeth, teeth that everyone else wants to extract. And learn how to provide new options for your patients that you never even thought of. Visit the website and join here, uh, theonwardprogram.com. I'm Dr. Ed Feinberg and I am available to give presentations. My CV and speakers packet are located on my website, and I can be reached at info at theonwardprogram.com. Thank you.